You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Oh my god, Jam. But welcome to another episode of Feeding Off Each Other. This time. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> This time, coming to you, not really that live, from the Pangea Pod Hotel here in Whistler. We're all in individual pods today. How is everyone doing? I can't see I can't see anybody, so I don't know how you're doing. I feel doing good. Great, don't you? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to talk over each other because we can't see each other. Oh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be different. Uh, Dave, what time of day is it? Oh, it's the evening time. I, uh, it's uh, 11.46 p.m. On a, on a Wednesday evening. We uh, are in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, we just uh, had a you know good day of the boys were riding. And then we went to a place called Sushi Village and uh, had some adult beverages. Matt, why the heck are we in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada? We're on the I Only Ride Park Tour. <laughs> Dave, play the sound, goddammit. I already played it. I didn't that want to sound. overuse it. That was a sound. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. We're at the... We're yummy! At, we're, uh... <laughs> yummy! We're at the first stop of the bike park tour. We're in Whistler. I think this is the world's first pod podcast. I thought about that. I don't think so. There's got to be another pod pod. Yeah, but the, the only good one. <laughs> no, that's also probably not true. We should do the intro. Should I do an intro? I'm... Stoked to have in the room a good, good friend, an incredible mountain biker, a very talented photographer, videographer, storyteller, a lover of trucks, a lover of boats, a lover of the outdoors, a good vibe to have around in any situation, no matter where you are. Steezy McGeezy, Ollie Jones. <laughs> Is that Chewbacca? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Welcome, Molly. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. Uh, thanks for having us on the Pod Pod, Matthew, and on the I Only Ride Park Tour. That's uh, a pretty special occasion. Yeah, you're here as. What are you doing here, actually? Hanging out with the boys, getting the bangers, and uh, you know, creating magic, getting creative, getting weird with uh, a bunch of other weirdos. What are you most What are you most stoked for? Um, I'm stoked to go to a bunch of bike parks, to be honest, that I've not spent a ton of time to, a ton of time at. I've been to all the all of them except Revelstoke, but not not a lot, you know, just a couple of days here and there, and uh, you know, go in with a bunch of people too that kind of make the experience even better. So, what is it? Day three? Day three? Wait, wait is it still day three? Day it two, is day, day three. Ten yeah, minutes we're, left in we're day, day three. three. We're almost uh, in day four. There's been a lot of action, but. Man, we've been doing a lot. Uh, big standout moment. Ollie, you backied the Oakley sender hip on Garbo. But did I? I don't think I actually did it. Uh, you did a heel clicker, heel clicker to nothing to home run slide on your palms. Yeah, the palms took a thrashing, that's for sure. But uh, <laughs> I'm in danger. That was so <laughs> gnarly, man. Take us, take us through the play-by-play. The play-by-play, I don't know, you know. What did you say before we left, Kodak Courage? Yeah, <laughs> you definitely had a, a dose of the Kodak Courage. Well, you brought it up, and it was in my mind, and then Kaz gave me that look, you know, when he's like, oh, yeah, we could get a six shot. And Next thing you know, Jonesy's thinking about back in, but, yeah, I don't know. It's funny because I look at the clip, and I'm like, oh, it didn't, just didn't feel right, but it could have. I look at the video, and I'm like, oh, maybe it could have gone, but. You know, there's always another day, and, you know, it's early days in the bike park tour, so got to kind of, got to reel her in a little bit, I think. Yeah, you'll get her one There's of a lot of excitement. <laughs> so are we going to see another, another backy on the tour? Uh, I don't want to make any promises, but I, I would like to. It's, uh, yeah. Jason said there's a mulch jump. We got invited to a mulch jump in Revelstoke. We did oh, get invited today. Yeah. Um mulch is softer than the uh, Oakley jump so if if we go to a mulch jump with a good lip I might back you the session for the first time no way that'd be way. sick that'd be no sick way. everyone's doing a backflip everyone <laughs> Dave <laughs> you included okay yeah yeah I'll do a backflip we gotta get Dave on the bike park I'll do it oh, we gotta <laughs> do that we, I would love to do that this year where should we take him uh Sun Peaks we're going there tomorrow some peaks we could. I mean, on one of the stops, we could get you a bike. We we do have rental 
You bikes. can. I have more bikes. We all have more bikes. You can take one of ours. Yeah. yeah. We all got backups. Yeah, we should do that. That would be great. Get a put some goies on you. How many goies do we have? How many can we put on Dave? Three reds. Um, Unicorn mount. A Canon C70. Dad cam duct tape to the side of the helmet. Yeah, as long as my injury is well documented, I'm like pretty chill about it. We should do it. What if it, Ollie takes you? I mean, Ollie's like the best rider here. He could probably teach you a few things on the hill. Hey, Dave, have you ridden a bike park before? Never. You never ridden a bike park before? No. Dave, have you ever mountain bike before? <laughs> yeah, I did what oh. I did when I was like a kid, just like uh, like like very basic, just you know, like in North Man. But do you remember uh, what trail or anything? No, like just just like uh, high innocent shit. And did you like it? It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you've actually experienced mountain biking. No, I, I really haven't done it properly. Where would you take him, Ollie? Uh, if he, if we were to ride the bike park tomorrow in Whistler, if you were trying to make a person fall in love with mountain biking in one day, where would you take him? Probably the Coast Gravity Park, straight up. Because <laughs> oh my god, well the Coast Gravity Park is like. You know, it, that's more of a organic experience because although it's like a place that you would go to like ride bikes, like a facility, right? Like the fact that you're sitting in the back of a truck and like, you know, just mm. having that interaction is way different to just sitting on a chairlift. And the trails there are like insane, dude. Like just, just butter everywhere. Yeah. I just want, I want the bunny trails. Um, so insane sounds terrifying to me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Insanely insane. Yeah, but it's like any bike park. Like, there's a variety of different right. trails. Insanely you know, they, they have the insanely crazy, days. but then they have the insanely <laughs> buttery smooth. All right, sounds good. All right, so uh, I think we should dive into some, you know, questions about Ollie as, as a guy. <laughs> hey, so Ollie, you uh, are the most fun person to ride behind ever, and I'm not the first person to think that. I remember Matt Hunter brought that up. I actually remember this today that I think it was Air Prentice, NSMB.com's Air Prentice. Uh, this is like a competition to find like a new sponsored rider for the website. I met you there and I heard Matt Hunter, who was a guest rider at the event, say that it was insane following you. And I, I, I have a vague memory that he said you were the most fun person to follow ever. Like he was your favorite. He was the your his favorite person to ride behind That's yeah but you're huge. also missing a, a key detail what um most fun rider to ride behind besides someone do you know who that someone is no brendan fairclough oh <laughs> was that the was that, that what that's, that's what he actually said oh that's what he said okay yeah well there was something to do with with him in there but i mean fuck that's a pretty insane compliment to be honest i was gonna say second to bren dog is like yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah that's insane no that's man insane. when i heard it from him i like it meant a lot uh, i thought that was really cool and it's true you're insane like what do you think of you know a lot of people you're just like a fun guy to watch rip down drills you're so creative you were riding in ways that i didn't even i couldn't even imagine you're seeing things that i don't see and uh, making the use of, you know, it's like the trail is your canvas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's essentially what it is, right? You have like a certain amount of room to play, depending on the kind of trail you're riding. But uh, yeah, I don't know, biking is pretty... I've, I've been doing it for so long now that I, you know, I don't need to take it super serious. I just want to have fun. I'm not looking to be like a, like a super crazy fast guy or like... I actually like to take it a little slower on the trail and find, you know, fun little side hits or just, like, read it a bit differently, you know, than, uh, than just hauling your ass down the trail as fast as you can to get to the bottom. Were you ever, like, the type of guy? Like, did you ever want to race, or did you grow up kind of wanting to hit the side hits, do the tricks, and uh, do 360? Oh, well, I started out dirt jumping because there was no mountains in the U.K., um, so I was just full dirt jumper kid, but that kind of like nurtured my, you know, like I got a, few, a couple tricks in the bag. Um, backflips as we saw. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to do like some combo tricks, but that's like, that's a little crazy, like flips and spins and you know, some no handers or some no fuzz and stuff like that. Just have fun on the trail. It's nice to be able to do that stuff on, on features that you wouldn't normally, you know, I don't know, just have fun on the bike. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, right? 
Ollie, I have a question for you. Um, how close is the microphone to your mouth? Because it sounds very far away to me. How's that, Dave? That sounds good. All right. Thanks for going. saying it. Thank. I'm glad somebody said it. It sounds echoey. Is this better? Yeah, 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 like, better. better. You had like pod echo. There was a distance, and I yeah. was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it's the pod pod. It's the echo pod. <laughs> is anyone's pod fan on? You guys are off. No. No, okay. mine's off. Where is the fan? Beating up. Yeah, there's a whole like system in here. There's a USB port. It's pretty. We want the fans to be curious. listening, not the fans listening to the fans. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this angle's better. It's hard to uh, get comfy because I got a couple wounds on my hip. Now you sound great now. Okay, we're, we're belly down now. Yeah, how are your wounds? Like I was thinking, uh, we have 17 days to go. And <laughs> yeah. There's quite a gnarly gash in your hand, and I don't want it to get infected. We should take care of that. No, she's good. I give her a good scrub in the shower. I was squealing a little bit like a girl, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. It's yeah, you... definitely oozing, but it'll be fine. <laughs> All right, we don't fine. need to hear about your tuggies. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dave went there. Ollie, um. What's the worst injury you've had? Bike related injury or just injury? Well, I guess. Yeah. Well, I want to hear in both now. I'm assuming there's. Two. I don't know. Straight up, I had more injuries when I lived in the UK, just like gooning around with my friends, than I have since I've been in Canada. Like, since I've been in Canada, touch wood, we're in the pod. Um, All right, more tuggy talk. What do we talk? No, no. Um, I've only had like one cast since I've been in Canada. I broke my scaphoid, which was a pretty sucky injury. But um, yeah, worst injury I've had, probably my knee. I did my ACL, which was a bummer. But it did send me on the Canadian trajectory because without that, I wouldn't have dropped out of college and figured it was a good idea to come and check out Whistler. While Wait, I was rehabilitating. You hurt your knee, so you dropped out of college? Yeah, I, like, couldn't drive or couldn't, like, you know, I was just, like, crippled by this injury, you know? I couldn't really do anything. I was kind of, you know, oh, I guess I was maybe even a little bit depressed at the time because I couldn't really hang out with my friends or, like, do anything, and, you know, I was in a lot of pain. Um, and as I slowly kind of got out of the, you know, I was starting to, like, limp around a little bit, I booked a flight to Canada to check out Whistler. What uh, made you come to Whistler? Did, where did you see it? Oh, I saw it on the internet. I saw all these crazy videos of like crankworks. And uh, and I had a couple of buddies that I grew up riding with as well that were a little older than me at the time. Well, they are still older than me, I guess. Because <laughs> the time's late. <laughs> the time's late. <laughs> it sounded crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's how time works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and they'd been here. They they came here in 2006, and uh, you know, obviously, I heard all these stories about how epic Whistler was, and yeah, we're still here. And, and how did you envision it? What kind of life did you want to live in Whistler when you came here? Uh, that was a little further down the road, I think, because I didn't have any expectation when I came to Whistler. I was kind of just enjoying it for what it was, because. I mean, I watched videos, but it was very bike specific. It wasn't like, you know, I didn't really know about the village or, you know what I mean? It was literally just the bike trails on the hill. And I was like, oh, that place looks insane. I got to check that out. But what were you doing at the time for work? Uh, what was I doing at time for work? I don't know. I moved here when I was like 18 or well, I moved to Canada when I was 18. Um, I did some like shooting stuff. Um, like clay pigeon stuff and I worked in a freezer this random like freezer thing like packaging frozen foods <laughs> in the UK yeah in like a factory uh, well yeah it was like a factory and you wore a big coat and you like picked you get like a list and you pick like it items off this like list and then you wrap it in like uh, plastic tape and then it goes on a truck yeah, I did I, that. I like when you said, sh oh, I did shooting stuff. I was like, okay, so you were into filming things. And you're like, yeah, clay pigeons. <laughs> it's like, okay, no, no like, totally different. Yeah, where I grew up, it was like countryside. So, you know, a lot of people with guns and shooting and hunting. and. But I, what did you do with the clay pigeons? Or how did you make, Oh, what was your job? My job was, you basically count the points and you get like a crew of people and everyone shoots. Um, and, you know, you're shooting the clays. Um yeah, it's so long ago. I don't even know. It's just clay pigeon shooting. I just kind of facilitated, like, you know, there was events and tournaments and stuff like that, and I would assist in, you know, just shooting. So when you decided you wanted to come to Whistler, 
where did you plan to stay? Uh, I, I had some friends that were here and I flew here on my own to meet them and they had like a, a random rental place. I paid, when I first came to Whistler, I shared a room with a buddy um, and it was $225 a month for, for this shared room. Um, and yeah, that's where I lived and stayed and I didn't have a visa at the time, but I'd, you know, did some under the table work to kind of survive. What were those first, like, what was it, were those first jobs in Whistler? My first jobs in Whistler, I worked at the Reuse It Center, which was awesome job. Um, I worked What's at the, the Reuse It Center? The Reuse It Center is like a secondhand thrift. It's a community, it's, it's like a community-based thrift store. So people that are leaving town, it's a very transient kind of population in, in Whistler, right? Because people are coming here and working for a season and then they accumulate a bunch of stuff and they're like, oh shit, I got to like take it somewhere or sell it or whatever. So... You know, a lot of stuff ends up passing through the reuse it center, so it's just like a place you can go. You can actually find some insane deals. It's a pretty sweet spot. Yummy! What'd you do after the uh, reuse it center? Uh, the reuse it center. I worked at Creekside Market slicing deli meat. No <laughs> way! <laughs> yeah, Smoking legit, these dude. Meats. <laughs> and I still got all my fingers. That thing, the big guillotine thing's mental. No way! Yeah, yeah. And I used to, you know, the, you know what I used to hate it because I used to work the evening shift as well, and I used to be the guy that had to clean that machine, and it was horrific, dude. Oh, my oh. God. it was such a sh oh my god. <laughs> what do you uh, how? What do you mean? You just gotta clean that thing. It's just like a massive, big, like circular. It's basically it's like a chop saw. If you know what a chop saw is, if you were like doing carpentry stuff, it was like a giant chop saw, but it just slices greasy meat all day. Yummy. Yeah, <laughs> but but it was at the time, you know, it was like. It was hot, like eating, just being able to work in a place that had food. Oh, my God. I used to just eat food all day. It was awesome. So I think that you're living a lot of people's dream. A lot of people want to come here and uh, move halfway across the world, bring their bike and ride the bike park every day, ride the trails. For those people who are having trouble taking the first step and feel, you know, they can't really see themselves doing it yet, but they know they want to do it. What do you say to those people? Um, it's not easy, um, to, you know, obviously move to another place that you've never been to before, whether it's like, you know, a, a couple towns down, down the road or, or if it's like a completely different continent, but, um, I don't know, like for me, I just got a visa and it was kind of like a try before you, I, I never anticipated on moving to Canada permanently. I came here on a six months visa to try it. And then obviously... You just, I made sacrifices to be here and, 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 and all that, you know, I'm the only person in my family that's in Canada. So when people come to, I don't see my family like all the time. Um, you know, it, it can be tough for sure, but, uh, yeah, look at where we live. We get to shred bikes and, and the winters are, are equally as epic, you know, you got like pow days all the, all the time. Yeah. It's pretty, I think, I think any advice you just gotta try it. Why not? <laughs> if, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So, you know, I, I think about this podcast sometimes and how to make it good. And uh, I'd like to get some of people's best stories. So I know that's like a big ask, but Ollie, do you have any funny or just good stories you want to tell? Could be bike related, could be not. <laughs> could have primed me. So I could have thought about because I, I, I mean, do, I have we, a lot we, of epic stories. But well, like, Ollie, you, um, you have uh, a couple dogs. And uh, you have a pretty interesting story about uh, how you found one of them. I believe it's Della. Uh, no, it's actually Lupe. It's Lupe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're both they're both great stories. Um, but Lupe, we found on a road trip in Mexico with some other really good friends of ours. Also, Matt's and Jason's. I don't. Do you know uh, Braden and Jenna, Overland Outfitters, Dave? Uh, yeah, I know Braden. Well, there we go. We're all we're all homies, but uh, yeah, we went on a road trip uh, just before the pandemic. Actually, that was like our last trip before the pandemic. We went to Mexico um, on a biking, surfing, four by four extravaganza, and uh, yeah, we found we found this dog on the side of the road, and uh, I I spotted the the dog, and we were kind of like. Haley and I, we already have a dog, and we're like, oh, you know, we've already got one. Maybe we should get another because it's the same thing. We just, you know, put a bit of extra food down. 
and now we've got two dogs and it's a nightmare <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare if you've got one dog and you're thinking oh yeah i'll get another one because you know i've already got one don't do it do not do it because it's it's hard but they are the love of our lives so you know but yeah we found this dog in mexico which was pretty sweet put it in the back of the truck and drove it back to canada yeah what's the uh story uh with the other dog Oh, the other dog. <laughs> Do you want to know the story? But essentially, I have a special needs dog, and she's just, she's not like special needs where it's like, you know, she can't like get around or anything like that, but she is just an absolute psycho and wants to kill everyone and everything unless you spend at least like a year on treats. I've never heard of um, murderous rage being a special need. <laughs> <laughs> well she's just straight terrorist we always joke about like oh yeah we go to the dog park and she's all she lives on a leash you know she lives a great life there is times when she's not on a leash at our house and you know in the yard and stuff sometimes but um we always joke when we take her to the dog park that if we took her out let her off leash it'd just be like a straight terrorist attack special needs more like special bleeds special bleeds <laughs> Boom. Oh and we're god. live oh my god we're doing it <laughs> yeah so i got a couple crazy dogs and that's that they're like kids but yeah. Do you ride with them at all? Can they go on the trail? Oh, they love biking, yeah. Um, my crazier dog, she's uh, she's 12 or 13 now. Um, so she's getting on a bit. You know, she used to be able to do... That dog is actually called Della, which is where Haley and I met in Della Creek in Lillooet. Um, and funny story is she used to be able to rip, like, multiple laps of that trail, which is a very high speed, long... It's like a 15-minute descent and... Yeah, my little dog would just rip that thing like a couple laps, no problem. But now that's a huge. That's a huge. That's huge. Lap. Yeah, yeah. She honestly, I've never met a dog that was as fast as her in her prime. She just used to like just crush it all dogs under the table, <laughs> oh uh, running like it was. It's crazy. But now, yeah, she she does half a lap and she's just walking, and you end up just waiting. You 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 know you know when you ride with friends that just want to stop all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, like I'm one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you mean us? Oh yeah, we'll just meet at the next waiting station. You know, like the next wait spot. <laughs> um, yeah, she's like that. You're just waiting for her all the time. Ollie, I want to hear about some of uh, your party stories in Whistler. I feel like uh, I feel like you got a few of those for us. What's the what's the like most just heinous, out of control party you've ever witnessed in Whistler? Heinous smoke. <laughs> Which one? We Jeez. want the dirt. <laughs> you want the dirt. Uh, I don't know. It's there's not like a specific party. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The cops always end up coming. You know, there's like there's some pretty insane full moon parties that go down in Whistler. Um, Describe what a full moon party is for the listeners. I, well, yeah, and me. A full moon party <laughs> is like a classic Whistler thing, you know. Like it's it's a party that's um, organized um, by <laughs> who just by... scratched their beard. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. Let me tell you about the full moon party. Hang on a minute. <laughs> so, full moon party. It's organized by these ravers, DJs, and typically the location isn't announced. But you would get in a cab at the end of the night after you've been drinking at the bar, and you you, you ask the cabbie, "Where's the full moon party?" He'll drive your ass like you know way into the bush, and you end up at this like insane party. Um, I went to one that was uh, just out of town, like 10 minutes, and it was like, there's a bunch of old logging equipment in the forest, and there's like, basically it was just fully decked out. Just all this old machinery, like metal stuff in the woods, and yeah, just crazy. Just, yeah, there's always something like just nuts going on, you know? People getting... Whistler harvests people that, you know, are addicted to adrenaline, so you can only imagine the type of parties <laughs> that go down here, right? <laughs> you put a bunch of people in a room that are like that. It's yeah, and that's a recipe for a rowdy time. Yeah, what do you think of Whistler and the people of Whistler, especially the change uh, over the years that you've lived here? What was your impression of of this place? Yeah, uh, it's definitely times be changing, you know. Um, but then again, when I first came to Whistler, I remember people that were OG Whistler people. I've only been here for twelve years. It seems like a long time, but it goes so fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
But I remember when I first got here, people were like, oh, yeah, the mountain culture. There's like, there's no mountain culture here. But when I first came, I recognized the mountain culture. You know, there's a lot of people, like transient population that are just here for the good times. And, you know, they work the shitty jobs, cleaning dishes and, you know, working in cutting meat, deli meats. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And and now it's like, there is still like people that are, are grinding for the lifestyle out here. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know if there's... I still see a mountain culture, but maybe it's not as strong as it was. Hmm. Maybe Am I even answering the question? I don't know. Is yeah. this, a, is this a, what? Go on, Jason. Well, I, no, I was just kidding, because you mentioned all those shitty jobs, but I feel like now you, d- you don't have a shitty job anymore. What do you what do you actually do? What do you call yourself? Hmm. What do I call myself? That's I hate that. You know, yo, it's funny that you just asked me that question, because you know I looked at your Instagram not that long ago, and I was like, oh, Jason's a digital creator. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what Instagram <laughs> am I, calls Am me. I a digital creator? <laughs> I was like, I create digital stuff that people see online. Yeah. So I you actually are. changed my Instagram. Because of me? Because of you, Jason. Oh, wow. I'm not even joking. Wow. I thought digital creator, you're the only person that I saw that had that like title. And I was like, yeah, that's actually like bang on. Jason, you're a true influencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that is a good, it's a good, what do you ever, your title for what we do as creatives. But like, what do you create for the people who don't know? This deep in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> At the 20 something minute mark. Yeah, who are you? What do you do? What do, you do? Um, so I create videos. I make videos. I, you know, I do content stuff. I ride bikes. Like I, I guess I've cur- curated my lifestyle so I can just enjoy the things that I do and I make videos <laughs> and I bike. Who, who are you making videos for? Uh, I make a lot of videos for like, you know, people that want to like partners and, and people that support me like sponsors and, like brand, and like, yeah, brands. Yeah. And what are some and, of those brands that you've worked for? Mm-hmm. Uh, I do stuff for Ace Face. Um, I do stuff for Chromag. I do stuff for Marzachi, Fox. I do a lot of truck stuff too. Um, so yeah, it kind of, that was never planned, but you know, I'm really into trucks and Toyotas and stuff. So we've done work for Toyota and yeah, I don't know. A lot of stuff that I'm kind of into, I try and figure out how we can do a little something more, you know? So so to a layman, because we're all kind of in this world, like, you know, you make a video. That could be a hundred different things. What What is it that you go and make? Like, you know, how long is it? What's the vibe? Like, like what are you making? They can range from anything to, you know, short little ads or photos or, you know, we do, it's basically the whole content package. Um, Haley and I, you know, we're very close and she shoots photos, I shoot videos. So when we pitch projects or we get asked to do projects, you know, she kind of handles one side of things. I handle the other side of the things. And, and also we're not, we actually do the activities also we're not just like behind the camera so that's where it gets tricky when people ask what i do Mm -hmm. because it's like am i a professional bike rider or am i a filmer or am i you know i don't know i'm just trying to survive out here (laughs) i'm just still in whistler trying to make something work you know i mean it's funny though because what you're describing is many people's dreams. Like there's so many people out there working office jobs who mountain bike or dabble in photography or filmmaking that you have somehow (laughs) turned into your life. Do you ever remember like making strides towards that, like striving towards um, that goal or were you kind of just falling into these pockets of creativity through being in Whistler and meeting people? Uh, I think a little bit of both, to be honest. I, I don't think you could have one without the other. Um, I to make what I use. <laughs> oh, that was an answer. <laughs> <laughs> you cut it halfway. Well, can you just play the whole thing? You now? Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> it might influence my answer. I need to hear the whole one. All right, all right, all right, all right. you son of a bitch! Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Dave's cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get Kaz in here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. What was the What was the question? <laughs> you son of a bitch. 
I don't know. Something about digital creating. Uh, no, yeah. No one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we were, we were talking about if you, if you took steps to make this your career or if it just sort of fell into place through people and, and, uh, locations. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And my answer was, um, a little bit of both. Yes. I think, uh, you, I think you couldn't have one without the other. Um, this place is full of like-minded people. Uh, which is why I met all you guys, you know, I mean, Vancouver, see the sky, it's all BC, biking, it's all kind of the same, same. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm hungry for it too. Like I don't have, I mean, I dropped out of college and I moved to Whistler on kind of a, a whim. I don't really have, personally, I don't really have a lot of other options and I really enjoy what I do. So I kind of forced myself to make something work and we're doing something, which is cool. It's funny because I, I came back to the, uh, the the hotel here, the Pangea Pod Hotel, and uh, I went to go work in the in the sort of restaurant, coffee, lounge area. And I'm, I'm working away and I hear a guy on the phone and he's got an Irish accent and he's talking to what became evident uh, to be a, a client. And he's basically saying he does all the things that you do. And I was like, all right, I guess we're all just doing this. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, I, I was working like a corporate job and like. <laughs> oh, here comes the accent. Yeah, I'm Flawless just crushing. Irish. I don't even know. That wasn't even Irish at all. But um, yeah, no, it just, it, it made me laugh because I was like, all right, I guess like we're all so not even unique. Everyone's just trying to do this sort of thing now. Yeah. I, well, I think the pandemic kind of uh, inspired a lot of that kind of stuff too, honestly. Just yeah, people, 100%. people, you know, a lot of YouTube stuff, a lot of people, you know, I don't know, people maybe adding to their hobbies, you know, or like kind of, you know, striving to make their hobby more job like. For well, sure. <laughs> there's all kinds of um, jobs and careers that are like people, they cannot find uh, em employees for. So like the, the airports, um, airlines. Um, you know, general practitioner, doctors, all kinds of things. I think so many people have converted to doing sort of the work from home, work remote lifestyle. Um, and it's this huge transition sort of since the pandemic, particularly. Yeah, hundred percent. Or, or, or maybe people just don't want to work anymore, period. Yeah, a bit, a bit of both. <laughs> Everyone just wants to be a digital creator. That is it. They see your Instagram, <laughs> Jason, and they're like... They're like, that guy is do that. fucking hot. Let's <laughs> do what he does. It's just Dave with 30,000 30, accounts. <laughs> just like, I just spent all day registering. Yeah. Um, so, Ollie, I don't know you that well. Um, tell me, where where did you grow up? I know you're from the UK somewhere, but uh, get specific. Tell me more. Specific? Well, have you ever heard of Robin Hood, David? Um, yeah, I have. That's where I'm from. I'm from Sherwood Forest. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> well, I'm from Nottingham, not Nottingham, I'm from Notts, <laughs> but yeah, I'm from Notts, um, Robin Hood, Kevin Cosner, yeah, Maid Marian. So where, where is that in it's, England? It's pretty Midlands, it's kind of bang in the middle of the UK, lots of forests, not many hills, lots of dirt jumps. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what's, what's the childhood like there? Like what's. What's the vibe? Like, was there any culture shock when you came here or was it? Uh, yeah. I was pretty well traveled, to be honest. Right. Growing up, um, you know, my family always took me on vacations and I've been went, went to Europe and I've, I've been around. So go into another country and especially a country where they speak English. Yeah. was pretty. But it was also the first place where I officially i mean i traveled on my own when i was i think my first plane ride on my own was when i was 14 years old um but coming to canada with you know a plan to stay for at least six months as a tourist on my own when i was 18 mm. that was definitely it wasn't a culture shock but it was like a reality check as far as like whoa feeling like a bit of an adult now <laughs> you know and and yeah, I'm on, I'm kind of a bit more on my own program, right? So were you like a mountain bike kid or were you doing, you know, Yeah. were, were you doing football? No, uh, I didn't play <laughs> soccer. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You can't it's go been back. A minute. You can't go back. I can't go back. You know what? I'm your references good. are out of control. Everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not but fun, fun fact, I've actually not been to the UK 
since I came here. Holy. Well, I came shit. in 2010 for the six months visa, and then I had to leave, and then I went home and I sold basically all of my belongings. We should go back. You got to take us, man. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, my my reasoning was, well, if I'm going to come home, it's not a vacation, but now enough times passed where if I went home, it would for sure be a vacation, and it would feel like a whole new place. Yeah, your, your that time would be the here is shock. almost the same amount. Of, like, it's like two-thirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I was still a kid when I came here. Yeah. And I feel like I've my adult learnings and growing up have been in Whistler. I, <laughs> I don't know if you. Cool. I don't know if you answered this, but uh, where did you fly when you were fourteen? Uh, I think I got grandparents in Spain, and I think that was my first place that I f- took a plane flight and and ended up going to my grandparents' house in Spain. Uh, when I was a kid, but I also went to France too on a mountain bike holiday with my older friends at the time, which was wild, actually. I can't believe my mom let me go away with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to Ibiza? I, I, I have been to Ibiza. I have been to Ibiza. Did you take I'm sorry. any pills there? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was actually really young, and I was with my mom and my grandma. Did you hit the grotto with them? <laughs> the grotto? Is that not like some Christmas Santa Claus stuff? <laughs> no, don't no, they no. have grottos in Ibiza? A grotto? What? No, a grotto Grottos? is like um, like Hugh Hefner at the Playboy Mansion had a <laughs> yeah, grotto. It's like a, it's like kind of like an underwater it. cave, and they yeah. got like don't they have like bars and caves? It's and like stuff? a hot tub cave. Sa- Santos told me about this. Oh, uh, well, I mean, hmm. yeah, that sounds very Santos. <laughs> <laughs> sounds very Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> Santos in Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> Fanto thin a beef that. <laughs> oh my god hey yeah. so all the uh you know with the like digital creating and st- stuff and you this kind of like blurred lines between uh you being a pro mountain biker and digital creator and photographer and videographer all that stuff how do you balance work and play and how do you balance when writing becomes uh work and not just play I'd like to think that I am strategic about kind of maintaining that balance. But typically, it, there's like something natural that goes on where you kind of like sway from, you know, a little more filming or a little more writing. Like, for example, you know, I did that back the other day and I have like a couple of hours. So, so I'm on the camera now for a little bit, you know, and I'm less, I'm not as like, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to do something crazy on the bike, right? Um, so I guess, I don't know, it keeps it fresh, being able to switch back and forth. It's like, the show will go on regardless. <laughs> you know, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. Do you ever feel like, though, when you go on bike rides, even with just a group of friends, you're like, oh, should I, like, film this? Or, like, capture something? Or, like, oh, I wish I had a camera right now to, like, do it? Or are you, like, you can remove yourself from that mind space and just be like, no, nah, I'm gonna go biking. Honestly... What gets me out of bed to go riding is the fact that, like, there's potentially some magic to be made. So, I, like, magic to be made. To be captured. Image, yeah. Like, to, to be captured, yeah. yeah like, yeah, I yeah. find it. I do have a hard time going uh, going away or going on a trip and not being able to capture it in some form. And it, and I guess, I guess that's maybe a sign that it doesn't feel like work to me. Mm-hmm. Because I enjoy it so much, and usually I'm with my friends that like I want to create memories with, and that I'm like super close with anyway. Well, what I've seen from you, just as an outsider, and you know, watching the videos of uh, the Mahalo my do videos you've featured on, it's it looks like you're just authentically having so much fun. Probably regardless of whether or not you know they made you go and do that thing on camera again, you know what I mean? Like it just looks like you're just having a blast regardless. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I I am having a blast regardless. I mean, I try and, uh, yeah. Like, I think that's probably your superpower is just kind of enthusiasm in general. Yeah, I agree. I think there's some people you, you turn a camera on and they almost put on, like, a, a bit of a persona looking at myself here. And, uh, <laughs> and me, yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, but actually, actually, and... Yeah, but and you then, guys are having fun. No, I don't have fun. No, J- Jason's a <laughs> huge when you asshole when the camera's off. It's all like, a giant yeah. show. Hey, you shut up about my huge asshole. You hit that red <laughs> button, you, everything it's changes. Gaping. gaping. No, but honestly, like, you are, are uh, I would say, naturally authentic. Like, uh, there, 
the you on camera is the you in real life. There's no and switch. I, I think mm-hmm. I, I, I would say that. you're also authentically natural. Yeah, and authentically authentic as well. I, I just want to add that. <laughs> Yo, you could do that as your Instagram tagline. Authentically natural. An authentic <laughs> digital creator. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're right. You're, you're right. Just went up. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the kind words. Thanks. I I, uh, I hope that I come across like that, you know? Yeah, um, man. You know. Good vibe. Like you walk into an area and again, I haven't spent as much time with you and you just walk in with big sunglasses and you're like, what's up? Ready to party. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. that's the guy from the video. <laughs> yeah, nice, big nice. speaker in hand. Have, yeah, have, exactly. you guys, uh, have you guys heard of the Enneagram? Yeah. Mm, yeah. What You've heard oh, about yes, the Enneagram, the, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so like the MNFT, you know, whatever. No, <laughs> no it's no. not NFT. No, no, no. I'm just, I was saying letters and I stumbled into something that meant something else. But like the you ENF stumbled into or whatever. The you know what I'm talking about. The ex- there's like an explorer and stuff. Uh, I don't know, but there's a lot of businesses Adventurer. that when they do what? job interviews and stuff, they'll do like, it's basically a personality test. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, it's the Enneagram test. I did it myself. I know a lot of people that have done it and, um, and yeah, read about the kind of traits that I have. And I was like, whoa, it's the kind of, basically I am the golden retriever. Uh, mm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, if you read an, an, the number seven Enneagram, mm. then it's me to a T. Are you like, you're like an extroverted extrovert, I think. I'm definitely an extrovert. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it tells you what you are at your best and also what you are at your worst, you know? But if you guys haven't done it, I would 100% recommend doing it. I want to do this. How do yeah, I do yeah. it? You just go on Google and type in Enneagram test and you take the test and you'll find yourself <sighs> repeating the same answers because the questions are the same, but it's to try and like, you know, get you dialed in. Right. Yeah, you and Haley told me about this. I did it. Uh, I've forgotten my results though. It was like maybe five years ago. Yeah, but- if you read through all the numbers, you kind of get a gist of what they are and then you're like, you can... You know, kind of put a number on, like, oh, you could so, be this. Do you, you want to hear that. what seven says? I, I, yeah, what is it? Yeah, please <laughs> tell me. I was trying to find it. Desperate to quell their anxieties, can be impulsive and infantile, do <laughs> not know when to stop, <laughs> addictions and excess take their toll, debauched, depraved, dissipated, escapists, offensive, and abusive. <laughs> oh, Jesus. There's no way. That took a yeah. turn. I would not yeah. say that. Yeah, you'll yeah, make yeah, 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 I can't see yeah, you. Yeah, all checks out. All yeah. checks out. Mm-hmm. I can't see you, so I, could, I so, think you're bullshitting. Continue. Go on. You think I'm that good at words that yeah, I made Dave, those up on the there's fly? There's no way. Pretty good at words, <laughs> man. You're in the pod pod. I barely <laughs> pronounced those. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what, what? Okay, what does the golden retriever mean to you, Ollie? I'm sure you didn't think of all those adjectives. How how would you describe the golden retriever? Uh, I don't know. Excited to I don't know. Just get out and you know do stuff. Keep busy. You know they want they want to please. Um, I don't know. Golden retriever is just mellow. You know, but just. They just want to have a good time. They're, they're excited like, they're to just see giddy. people. Yeah, they're exactly. sweethearts. Yeah, they're, yeah. You know, yeah, they're 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 amped. Yeah, beautiful blonde hair. Hey, we don't have much card space. Uh, how much time do we have, Dave? We're at, we're at forty six minutes. I think we could make this one a shorty. We've never done that. Um, I think we should. I think we have like uh, twenty minutes left. Yeah, well, we, I just want to make sure we have time for uh, this or that. About that, I'd say we should dive into that in about I don't know for the next five or so. Wait, that or this? Oh, fuck. Why don't we just play about? right now? Let's just play right yeah, now. Let's do it. What is it? Well, Jason, uh, when you left the room like 45 minutes ago, Ollie, we wrote down some ideas for this or that, which is like you have to choose one thing or the other. And we tried to come up with some ones that would be hard for you. I've got them here. And I've we came up here. with four. <laughs> no, no, no. We've got about 10 or 12. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, Ollie. It's a speed round. Don't think about it too hard. Just first thing that pops into your mind, okay? Okay. It's going to be one or the other. You ready? Okay. Kay. Wait, 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 wait. Dave? Yeah. Do we have oh, the, this yeah. or that? Music, please. Yeah, you, you ready? Show Are you music? ready? <gasps> okay, Ollie. We have 100,000 seconds on the clock. Question one, photo or video? Oh, Photo. <laughs> Backflips or 360s? Uh, 360s. Fat Tony's or Misty Mountain Pizza? Fat Tony's. Celebration raspberry cookies or Cadbury chocolate bars? The raspberry one, because I don't like... Oh, no. 
Yeah, the raspberry one. Red Bull or Guru? Oh, don't <laughs> kill me, dude. You're killing me. It's the Guru. <laughs> you must answer. It's the Guru. Ah! Boats or trucks? Oh, trucks. Oh, Tr my God, but the boats are so good. <laughs> 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 trucks or bikes? I'm crying. I'm crying, by the way. You idiots. Trucks or bikes? <laughs> bikes. <laughs> no, Della? bikes for sure. For sure, because I can still get around on a bike. Della or Lupe? <laughs> dude, oh. that, that's a no-brainer, dude. Straight up Lupe. <laughs> <laughs> Fish eye or long lens? Fish eye. Oh, Dirt, I love that. Dirt merchant or A-line? Dirt merchant. Last but not least, first or second gen Tacoma? Second. Ooh. Second. Wait, I got another one. Dave or Jason? <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Just fucking say it. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe Dave, because I know uh, I know Jason. You know more than I know Dave. I'm interested I like to Jason learn more than I more. like myself. So I'm I just, always everybody eager knows. to learn. Such a golden retriever answer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end? That's the end. <laughs> good no, job. Well good done, job. Well done. I can't believe you asked me bikes or trucks. <laughs> that plagues me. I go to bed thinking about that question. I'm like, do people think that I'm like a truck guy or a bike guy? Dude, I, I actually, I do wonder where did your love of trucks come from? Because in the UK, it's not so much of a thing. My love of trucks came from the fact that I'm essentially a whistler bum and I can't afford to take it to the shop. So, wait, what? How does that work? <laughs> well, you got to watch YouTube and figure out how to fix your truck because <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it doesn't break a lot, but I'm always working on it. But why did you buy a Tacoma when you, when you came to Whistler? Like where, where did that inspiration come from? Uh, I, I don't know. It was the cool thing to get, wasn't it? It's the law. It's the law. I'm a mountain <laughs> biker. I have to get the Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, it's the rules. I guess so. Can you fix anything on your truck right now? Uh, yeah, there's actually nothing on my truck that I couldn't fix now, which is only a recent thing. I mean, I'd done engine swaps and stuff on uh, a first-gen Tacoma, but I'd never done it on a second, but my buddy just got ripped off, so we just fully rebuilt his truck. How did he get ripped off? Uh, he basically bought a truck, and the frame was just absolutely destroyed on it. And the guy he bought it off totally knew, but said he was leaving the country. So we did him a solid, and we basically did two engine swaps, two tranny swaps and fully rebuilt this truck in five days. And it's the same truck as mine. So yeah, there is nothing that I haven't technically done on my vehicle now or the same vehicle as mine. So yeah, if something breaks, no problem. You had some trouble with the boat question too. Yeah, the boat's insane. I've always wanted a boat and I got my first boat last year and oh my God, it's so addicting. And Jason, what? Yeah. You also went boating, and you're kind of hooked, I heard, too. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> after I told you about it, yeah, I rented a boat uh, in Horseshoe Bay and, and boated around the House Sound for four hours, and I, I get it. I understand. I You don't need to go fast. You don't need a big boat. But, man, once you're out there in the open water, oh. <sighs> yeah. Freedom. Freedom. You can go swimming wherever you want. There's no traffic rules. Well, there are. but <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple ferry lines. <laughs> yeah, I meant to ask you about that, Jason. You look good in the boat. Yeah, I... I <laughs> You guys want to go in on a boat? <laughs> um, did you play Lonely Island? I'm on a boat. Uh, yes, that did happen. Did you? Did it actually? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Can we do like a boat? I only ride boat tour next year or something. <laughs> yeah. I only boat ocean tour. I mean, we could just uh, bring the boat, Ollie, and forget the bike parks. I really want to do the rooftop tent on the boat and go around the house sound and Whoa. ride bikes. That's I didn't even know that's a thing. thing. How's that? Well, sound? it's not a thing, but we do it in the truck. So I mean, why don't we just take it to the water? There's probably a good reason. I don't know. I mean, that would be like a gnarly sleep, don't you think? Like wobbling around all night. Well, you could camp. Like you know, oh, you could pull it not... into like some spots. You could have the tent. I don't know. It depends what kind of boat you had. How do you level it? You don't level it. You just get it done, Matt. I have so many questions. Well, I mean, rugged. I feel like you'd be better off just taking a hammock and just 
You could also do that too, but it would be sweet to travel. It's more about the traveling around via boat to go ride your bike. Imagine like, okay, you go from Squamish to the Sunshine Coast and then you go pedal up to the Gravity Park or you go ride the B&K or, you know, and then you're like, oh, let's go over to the island and then yeah, you that stop in and like, you know, it'd be, it'd be awesome. What and about you, that secret uh, bike park in uh, Princess Louisa or something? The well, super there. rich guy bike park? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a lot about this by don't know i need to know more about it i need to know the guy so we can go shred those trails how i think would that be let's just show up on the boat <laughs> yeah just rock up <laughs> yeah. some cameras we're here for the bike park <laughs> <laughs> we're here for the only ride park tour. yeah, we, ex yeah. <laughs> we extended one stop yeah that'd be cool yeah you got to make that happen that's a really good video idea yeah um, i think that would be really fun that'd be cool yeah imagine if you had a couple boats and you were just like you know you could live like you could catch fish and eat it and be you know be a bit more self-sustained maybe via the water i don't know it'd be just be fun wouldn't it just this is the adventure. next stage of our life mm -hmm. boat guys oh guys okay boat sponsors out there <laughs> slide into those dms because we need a watercraft Ollie, what's what's after this for you? Like, what are you doing after? Uh, will we ever see you again? You will. What crank works? Because <laughs> oh. it's right after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I'll probably take a break um, after the Only Ride Park tour. Uh, maybe do some truck stuff, and then I'll be helping Kaz at Deep Summer. We're gonna, Ooh. yeah, Deep Summer. Really exciting times for Kaz. He got uh, invited to that seventy-two hour photo contest, so. Yeah, good luck to him. I hope we uh, can slay the bangers. I mean, that's... Yeah. Maybe we should get Kaz on the pod uh, as a guest. Kaz, before we recorded this, said, when are you going to get your boy on the pod? And I said, <laughs> no, no, I didn't know what he meant. I said, like, who, who are you talking about? He said, your boy. And we did that back and forth about 18 times. <laughs> And Where then, and then we just stopped talking and we moved on. And then I went, oh, you meant you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> was that before or after he hung upside down at Sushi Village? It was definitely after. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is all coming yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. We all took part in monkey shots today. This is, uh, I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but there's a special bottle of sake at Sushi Village that uh, you get participants to hang upside down by their knees from one of the wooden rafters. <laughs> And you, someone pours a shot of sake in your mouth <laughs> and it mostly gets all over your face and in your eyeballs. And we all did that. And it was great. Yeah. We all did baggies tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all got inverted. <laughs> no one ejected. No one ejected. It was a backies, no tuggies night. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> Kaz did the first one. So, uh, that's a uh, shout out to Kaz. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. He sent it. Yeah. He set the pace. Yeah. So maybe we'll have him on the pod. Yeah. Sometime, yeah, we your boy. Will. It'd be good your to boy. have him on the pod after Deep Summer, but after no, or before, before maybe. <laughs> no, let's do it before because he's at. Yeah, we'll do it before. He's only, on the road. He's he, only. Two he was pods away. on. He was uh, my replacement. Yeah, but he wasn't the guest though. We didn't get the. That's true. He didn't get to you know talk that much. That's mm -hmm. true. He has experience. Do, do we do we have a hot tub at any of our accommodations on the road? Yes. No Holy way. Shit. Let's do the tub pod, man. Oh my please. god. Yeah, the audio will be perfect. Pl oh please, I, <laughs> dude, I don't care. Yeah, turn the jets off, you crazy monkey. Then you'll see when Kaz <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. is farting in the tub. When what? When Kaz is farting in the tub. You'll <laughs> see and hear it. <laughs> like we could, we we should try. I think we can make it happen. Yeah. Can we go? We're gonna have to hold them though. Ollie, do you have anything? Do you want to promote real quick? Uh, Where no. can people follow your adventures? <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> what? It, can you say I'm nom nom then? <laughs> yeah, what's your Instagram? <laughs> um, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, "Oh no, no, that's it, guys." Um, all right, should we all do it to to wrap it up? Yes. Yeah, sure. We haven't done it in a while. I think we should do it every episode from now on. Yes, please. All right, ready? One, two, okay. three. Um, no, 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 no. And that's the pod pod. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. So long. Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts. <laughs>